Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we are going to be covering the wire stress substitution, a very important integration method. It's pretty straightforward and simple so this will be a shorter video, but it's incredibly important if you're going to be doing any integration V's or any other advanced integration. So this is the substitution right here and here are some interesting properties once you make the substitution. And without any further ado, let's jump into it. So the wire stress Wire stress substitution is absolutely a must know for integration Bs and other stuff integrals. It's very easy to learn and use. The main function that it has is it converts rational trigonometric integrals into standard rational integrals. Now we already know that for standard rational integrals there's an exact process to solve them. First you factor, then you apply partial fractions if, if you don't have to do long division first, and then you just go ahead and integrate each term. So essentially we're just converting an integral into another form of integral that we know we know how to solve. And unfortunately, the wire stress substitution in general only applies to this very specific class of integrals, the rational trigonometric integrals, but it is definitely the best way to evaluate a lot of that class. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So let's see how it works. So our substitution is y equals tangent theta over 2. If we solve for theta, we find that theta equals 2 tangent inverse of y, which gives us this expression for d theta, which will be important because we're going to be using the same d theta every time we make the substitution. Also, we need to find what sine theta and cosine theta are going to be, because if we're going to uh, be using this on trigonometric integrals, obviously that's going to be pretty important. So we're going to do this using the double angle formulas. First of all, let's draw a uh, triangle here. Notice I put theta over 2 right here in the, as the angle, and then tangent of theta should be y, because tangent theta over 2 is y. So we'll just put y here and 1 right here. Then we can solve for the last side, which is square root 1 plus y squared. So then we can use the double angle formulas here to actually solve for sine theta and cosine theta, and you'll see that for each of these, using the formulas, we get sine theta is equal to 2y over 1 plus y squared, and cosine theta is equal to 1 minus y squared over 1 plus y squared. We can also solve for tangent theta, cotangent theta, cosecant theta, and secant theta, but that's not going to be as helpful in general. So how can we use this in a problem? The first and most important thing is we need to actually check if this is going to be the right method. Now you can go ahead and just apply the substitution and see if it works, but in general, anything that has uh, lots of non-trig functions in it, the substitution will only make the integral tougher. It works best with rational expressions of trig functions, so if there's anything that's not really rational, again, it's not going to work out too well for us. And then again, sine and cosine raised to powers higher than 2, and even raised to the second power will make the integral much more difficult using this method, especially if they're in the numerator. So often there's actually an easier substitution or method present, but you can always fall back on the wire stress substitution, and I have an example that reflects that later. So then the second step is just going to be making the substitution directly, and then the third step is going to be using partial fractions, long division, or integral formulas to go ahead and evaluate the resulting integral. So let's look at some examples here. Oh. Our first example is pretty straightforward. So notice that if we have 1 over 1 plus sine x dx, we can go ahead and multiply by the conjugate, and we'll end up getting cosine squared in the bottom, since we have 1 minus sine times 1 plus sine is going to give us cosine squared, and then we can integrate that using our normal methods. However, in this integral, that doesn't really work, because we just end up with 4 minus, co 4 minus sine squared, which is 3 plus cosine squared, which didn't really help us at all. So in this case, we're actually going to have to apply the wire stress substitution. So when we go ahead and apply this directly, something actually cool happens when we're making this substitution. So first of all, our differential is going to give us 2 dy over 1 plus y squared. And then sine and cosine, well in this case we just have sine, is going to convert into 2y over 1 plus y squared. And the great thing about the wire stress substitution is that this 1 plus y squared that comes out of the differential we can go ahead and multiply this by everything in the denominator, and it actually cancels with the 1 plus y squared that's in the denominator of the expression for sine of x. And so we just end up with dy over 1 plus y squared plus y, which is super easy to integrate using the arctangent formula. So that's the integral right here. So that's mainly uh, one of the coolest things about the wire stress substitution is that this 1 plus y squared that comes out of the differential easily multiplies into the bottom, uh, into the de denominator of the original rational expression, and it, it simplifies sine of x and cosine of x. So that's something always to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, this is our answer right here. Notice that this answer is not very easy to go ahead and uh, differentiate and get 
our original expression back, and that's because we're using this kind of odd substitution. So this actually, if you did differentiate it and then you used tangent of x over 2, you used some uh, trig identities on it, you could get back the original expression, but it would be very, very difficult. That's one of the drawbacks to using the tangent half angle substitution, because it's very hard to check your answers since you get these sort of nasty results. So this is going to be an example where there's two different methods to looking at this. One of them is the wire stress substitution, which gives us a little bit of a more difficult uh, answer. But on the other hand, we have an easier method, but this easier method might not be the easiest thing to find for beginners. So that's why learning the wire stress substitution is so important, because even if there is a faster method, the wire stress substitution is more reliable. So here we'll talk about how to use the wire stress substitution. Whenever you're integrating from 0 to pi, your, bands, your bounds will change from 0 to infinity, which in general makes things a lot easier. So here is our integral right here. After simplifying everything, we're going to need to multiply by 1 plus y squared in the top and bottom. So we get the integral from 0 to infinity of 2 times 1 plus y squared over y to the fourth, plus 2y squared plus 1 plus 4y squared. And then after simplifying and multiplying by 1 over y squared, which you'll see y in a moment, we get this expression right here, which we can rewrite using y minus 1 over y. This is something that's going to show up a ton whenever you're doing rational integrals of the 4th or 6th or 8th order. So I, it's something I definitely suggest studying. Um, this substitution u equals y minus 1 over y whenever you have a symmetric polynomial in the bottom. Symmetric meaning um, the if you put all the coefficients as a, uh, in order, they would make a palindrome. Uh, this substitution is going to be really helpful. So we can rewrite this, this part in the bottom as y minus 1 over y squared plus 8, and then we have this in the numerator, so we can go ahead and substitute u equals y minus 1 over y, and then du is just the numerator. So we end up with 2 times the integral from negative infinity to infinity, because uh, when you plug in 0 and infinity into here, in the limit, you'll get negative infinity and infinity, du over u squared plus 8, and then integrating, we just get pi over root 2. So here, the wire stress substitution works, but it's a little bit slower than the more ideal method, which I'll show you here. Something that's uh, very interesting is whenever uh, the wire stress substitution is always best whenever we have sort of a, a linear combination of sine and cos on the bottom. However, when we have a quadratic combination of sine x and cosine x and uh, constants in the denominator, it's actually in general going to be a lot better to use this other method, which is essentially we multiply on the top and bottom by secant squared of x. That gives us the secant squared on x on the top, so we can substitute u equals tangent x, and then that's just our du. And on the bottom, we have secant squared of x and tangent squared of x, which can be, both be written in terms of tangent x. So after figuring out our bounds here, which are a little bit tricky because we do have a discontinuity from 0 to pi over 2, and then from pi over 2 to pi, because tangent goes up to infinity and then down to negative infinity. So you, you got to make sure to get your bounds right. Um, and then we just go ahead and do the normal integration, and you see we get the same answer. So this method is a lot faster and easier, but again, it's harder to spot if you're not um, if you're not super well versed in integration. So again, you can always just fall back on the wire stress substitution, and you can just brute force pretty much through any problem. And here's a third example right here, a sort of generalized version where we have a sine x plus b cosine x plus c. And I'm not going to go over this too much. It's just pretty straightforward integration and algebra, mostly. And this is our final answer for c squared minus b squared minus a squared greater than 0. Um, it's pretty straightforward, again. And it's not too complicated. Oh, also this y we should replace with tangent x over 2, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so this is sort of just a demonstration that no matter what a and b and c on the bottom are, we can pretty much find an answer for this integral. So this is really the type of integral that the wire stress substitution is cut out to solve. So here are some practice problems if you guys want to try them. Uh, I, d I don't have too many for this for the wire stress substitution, mostly just because there's only one class of problem that it actually is good at solving. So anyway. Uh, hopefully you guys can solve this problem. If uh, these problems, if not, I'm happy to help you out. Go ahead and join my Discord, and in the Math Help channel, I'm happy to help anyone out on, with their problems. Um, and also, if you guys want to learn more about different integration methods, feel free to check out the playlist on my channel called the Ad Advanced Integration Guide, which has videos on several different integration strategies for integration bees and other types of integrals. So anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I uh, hope you took a look at these practice problems right here, and anyway, uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.
Bye.